Hey, I'm Hubwood and today we are finally going to compare the two new different Acer Swift X 14 inch models to each other. If you haven't seen my general review of the Acer Swift X yet, I suggest you do that first and then come back here. Ok, so before we start let's have a look at the specs and differences of both 14 inch models. In general the only difference between them lies in the processor, the graphics card and the size of the SSD. The Ryzen 5 5600U model comes with the RTX 3050 non-TI and a 512GB NVMe SSD. And the Ryzen 7 5800U model comes with the RTX 3050 Ti and a 1TB NVMe SSD. Otherwise both have identical main specs consisting of a 14-inch 60Hz IPS screen, 16GB of LPDDR4X 4266MHz RAM and a 58Wh battery as well as the peripherals, connections etc. Like for example the keyboard, the touchpad, the loudness. But be aware that there will also be a 16-inch Intel model, which is not part of today's review. Both models are available in three colors by the way, gold and pink as seen here, as well as a silver model. And now let's start right away with the battery times of both models. Playing Microsoft Flight Simulator without any performance restrictions resulted in almost the same run times. The Ryzen 5 version was achieving 85 minutes and the Ryzen 7 version 82 minutes, which I consider within the margin of error. But watching YouTube at 50% brightness on super battery mode actually lasted 2 hours longer on the Ryzen 5 model. Leaving the laptop on idle at 10% brightness on super battery mode on the other hand resulted in a significantly longer battery time for the Ryzen 7 model. And to be honest I'm not sure what was causing these discrepancies. Maybe the Ryzen 7 has a lower TDP on idle and a higher TDP when under some load. Or there are some other factors which I didn't notice. However, when plugged in, the Ryzen 5 5600U model achieved a Cinebench R15 score of 1530 on multicore and 222 on single core. The Ryzen 7 5800U was around 22% faster on the multicore with 1878 points and about as fast on the single core performance with 226 points. In Cinebench R23 the Ryzen 5 achieved a multi-core score of 8850 and a single core score of 1360. The Ryzen 7 was about 25% faster in the multi-core test with 11069 points and about 3.7% faster on the single core test with 1411 points. In Geekbench 5 the Ryzen 5 5600U scored 6749 while the Ryzen 7 5800U was 17% faster and scored 7955 points. When unplugged the difference became much bigger with 4702 points for the Ryzen 5 and 7250 points for the Ryzen 7 which is an improvement of 54%. In PC Mark 10 I saw some strange behavior. Plugged in the Ryzen 5 and RTX 3050 model scored 5829 points and the Ryzen 7 model was 5% better with a score of 6120 points. On battery however the Ryzen 5 model scored 5092 and so it beat the Ryzen 7 model by 5.5% as this only achieved a score of 4823. In Blender I was testing the Blender 3.0 beta using the classroom and the chunkier demo files. Rendering the classroom with default settings via the GPU, the RTX 3050 model took 115 seconds and the RTX 3050 Ti model took 102 seconds to finish the rendering. Rendering via the CPU, the Ryzen 5 took 10 minutes and 11 seconds and the Ryzen 7 took exactly 8 minutes, an improvement of 27%. Rendering the chunkier scene via the GPU took 67 seconds on the RTX 3050 and 56 seconds on the RTX 3050 Ti which is 19% faster. Rendering the chunkyard via CPU took 105 seconds on the Ryzen 5 and only 85 seconds on the Ryzen 7 an improvement of 23%. Now comparing render times for a heavily color graded 1 minute section of one of my reviews, 
The Ryzen 7 Plus RTX 3050 Ti model was clearly faster in Adobe's Premiere Pro. Using the CPU with software rendering, it took 582 seconds for the slower Ryzen 5 and 487 seconds for the Ryzen 7, an improvement of 19%. Using the CUDA cores of the graphics card, the RTX 3050 model took 545 seconds and the RTX 3050 Ti model took 446 seconds, which is 22% faster. The temperatures of both laptops after 15 minutes of Cyberpunk 2077 were pretty much the same for the GPUs with around cool 64 degrees Celsius on the turbo fan mode using a laptop stand. The CPU temperatures were quite different though. The Ryzen 7 was a bit warmer with 75 degrees Celsius over the 70 degrees Celsius of the Ryzen 5. The fan noise of the single fan was identical though as the turbo mode seems to be using the same RPM in both laptops. 75 degrees Celsius is still pretty good for such a small laptop sporting an 8-core 16-thread CPU. I wouldn't worry about that at all. For both laptops, using the silent mode would noticeably reduce the fan speed while only degrading the performance by around 3-8%, but, so that is definitely an option in many games. The temperatures in silent mode would rise about 2 degrees for both CPU and GPU on both laptops. The difference in the gaming benchmarks was much smaller though. In some games there was no difference at all and I even had a few examples in which the RTX 3050 version was even faster. Of course, again, margin of error. But the RTX 3050 Ti's boost clocks seem to be a bit slower as both chips have a TDP of 35 watt with the RTX 3050 Ti having more tensor and ray tracing cores to support with the same TDP. In Warzone I saw a tie of both models achieving 63 FPS. In Red Dead Redemption 2 we see the mentioned margin of error, which caused the RTX 3050 model to be 1% faster as the RTX 3050 Ti model. In Rainbow Six Siege, the Ryzen 7 RTX 3050 Ti model actually achieved 10 FPS more, which is equal to an improvement of 6.5%. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the RTX 3050 Ti model scored 60 FPS, which is an improvement of 7F 7% over the RTX 3050. In The Witcher 3 the difference was 6% and in Rocket League it was 8.5%. I've also published an extended side-by-side -side video comparing both laptops. and You can check that out in the description or right over here afterwards. So it's clear that the difference in gaming is much smaller than the difference in the work-related benchmarks and scenarios. I guess for most people the upcharge of around $200 isn't justifiable if you're not using the laptop for these more advanced workloads. But the 16 threads clearly have an advantage over the 12 threads of the Ryzen 5 5600U. Both are very powerful ultrabooks in general, with processors that would have put desktop CPUs from about 3 years ago to shame. But before we are done for today, I also wanted to quickly compare the Acer Swift X laptops with the Asus ROG Flow X13. I know they are not 100% comparable as the Asus Flow X13 is even smaller and much more expensive, but for some people the Asus Swift X might be a valid alternative and they are clearly in the same ultrabook category. So, across the board, the Asus ROG Flow X13 with the Ryzen 9 5900HS is around 5-10% faster than the Ryzen 7 version of the Acer Swift X, but in most cases it will also be around $500 more expensive. The only exception being PC Mark 10, where the Ryzen 7 version of the Acer Swift X and the Asus Flow X13 achieved basically identical scores. Okay, that's all for today. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button and or subscribe to the channel for more laptop reviews and side-by-side -side GPU or CPU comparisons. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye and tschüss.